Hello, welcome to what I think will be a two-part video on Lagrangian interpolation using Mathematica. I'll assume that the theoretical knowledge is in order because I want to keep these videos as short as possible. So, um, let's assume that we've been given these values or this data, if you want to be technical, and you're asked to find the interpolating polynomial and the value of x at 2.5, rather the value of y at x equals 2.5. Now the expression for the interpolating polynomial is as follows, where n is the number of uh, values that you've been given. So we've been given 4 here, and n will be 4. The li in itself is a polynomial which can be expressed as follows, and very important in this expression is that i should not be equal to j. And I've written that explicitly so that you can remember it. So I'm going to show you how to expand l because that does tend to be a little tricky for other people and p was well relatively simple so i'll skip that um l can be expanded as follows if we want the expression for l1 that is for i equals one the rule says that i should not be equal to j so we're going to substitute instead of substituting one for j because our i is equal to 1, we will go to the next value, which is 2. So indeed, we go x minus x2 over x1 minus x2. And then the following expression will then be x minus x3 over x1 minus x3, and so on and so forth. Similarly, with L2, because i is now equal to 2, we cannot have an xj equals 2, rather an x of 2 for j. So what does that mean? It means that for this one, for the first um, product, we're going to have x minus x1 over x2 minus x1. So j equals 1. But instead of having j equals 2, we go to the next value, which is j3. And we go x minus x3 over x2 minus x3. This is done to ensure that you do not get a zero result, which basically is undefined. Because if you had x2 minus x2 over here, that would be a zero and division by zero is undefined, and so on and so forth. And I've done all three here as follows, uh, as well rather, and I'm pretty sure by now you can see the pattern, so I won't do L4 to keep this video short. Right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to define these values that we've been given. So I've defined the x values as x val as a list, and there it is. The y values similarly, there it is. This is how you define a list in Mathematica. Then I have defined a couple of variables that I will be using to store the results and the intermediate result. The sum will store this expression. The product will store this expression. And L, which is the intermediate product, will store this every single product within this expression. And this will come this will become um, obvious when we start the coding part so let's start with the coding part uh, so that we can see exactly how these values are used right we're gonna define two for loops and nest an if loop within the for loops and you will see why in a bit so the first loop which evaluates the sum this expression over here will be four from we want it to go from i equals 1, and we want it to go before that, before that, my apologies. Um, remember, I'm doing this as I go along, so there might be a few errors, and uh, that will also help you as well, so that you know what to do when you get errors. Firstly, we want to get the length, that is the number of values that we have within this table. So how we get that is we can store it in a variable called n. How we get that is we say the length, length, capital L, of x val. That will give us how many elements the list x val has, and that's 4. Right. From there, we can go 4. We're now defining the, the first loop, the outer loop, which evaluates the sum for i equals 1. We want it to evaluate from i equals 1 all the way to i is less or equal to n 
and we want it to increase i by one each time this is what it means so these are the conditions for the for loop you want it to start at i equals one comma and you want it to stop when i is less or equal to n and you want it to increase the i by one after each iteration right and you can use a comma what follows here is what you want it to do um, in order to evaluate the for loop but instead of writing instructions here we're gonna nest this in an inner for loop which I now evaluate the product so from there we go for we can't use I again so let's use J equals 1 to J um, is less or equal to oh goodness what have I done right is less or equal to n and we also want j to increase by one after each iteration right now what we could do is just write the product expression but we have this condition that states that i should not be equal to j so how do we compensate for that well what we do is we write an if statement which will evaluate whether i equals j or not so we wanted to evaluate this product when i is not equal to j so we're gonna say if i um, is not equal to j comma this is what we want it to do so when i is not equal to j we want the product which is a variable that we defined before to be expressed as this expression right so we want the product to be x minus the value of x at j that's what those two brackets means and we want to divide all of that by the value of x bracket um, the value of x at i minus the value of x at j and we store this result in product and from there this is what is going this is what is going to happen if i is not equal to j if i is equal to j we just wanted to return one for product so we just write the y product equals one so this is your if and your else from those who come from a programming uh, background so we then close the if statement um, we can actually make this whole thing a little more readable and uh, do this instead much better right now we've closed the if statement and after closing this if statement we still need to complete the condition for the for statement so after it evaluates this product for one expression for one value of j it's gonna come back again when j equals to 2 and evaluate the product for the for that value of j and so on and so forth until j reaches n so we want it to install these intermediate products on product but if we don't take this value and do something with it it's just going to keep getting overwritten so the value that was evaluated for j equals one will be overwritten by the value that was evo um, evaluated for j equals two and so on and so forth so we need to take that value and store it in another variable l which we've already defined here and from there what we can do is In this for loop we need to write the expression that L is therefore L times product so whatever value of L that existed before will be multiplied by product in order to give us that so we can write there L will therefore be equal to rather let me write it here for more legible for better legibility L times product right and we evaluate that and that closes that for loop right but we still haven't done anything to evaluate the sum so how do we evaluate the sum the sum will be the sum of 
all 